Well, we sing a lot about Jesus in this place, and we mean to do so because he is worthy of all of our praise. And we have been walking through the Gospel of John, and if you do have a Bible, go ahead and open it up or turn to it wherever on your device. We're going to be again in John chapter 16. And if you're with us online, we're glad that you're with us online. Uh, you can find notes somewhere out there, I think on our website or perhaps in the chat, um, the chat box there. And we have notes for you as well, if those would be helpful for you. And special welcome if you're a guest today. We're so uh, honored that you're here. And we pray for you and we pray for all of us, of course, that, that God would speak to us. And more importantly, that we'd have ears to hear. And so hopefully already you've heard of Jesus, you've tasted of Jesus, you've felt his presence, and we trust that, you know, the love of the body, the, this church body, would, uh, you'll feel that today as well as we look to Jesus, our source of love, which we focus on, and also our source of joy. And Jesus talks about that in our passage today, as Margie mentioned, that there's three things I'm going to focus in on that Jesus offers us in this passage. Now, if you've been with us, we have been walking through with Jesus through his ministry, and he is right on the cusp of being betrayed as Judas is gone and the disciples are together. And Jesus is sharing his heart, perhaps like any other way, and we see as John, the writer of this gospel, slows down, slows down and records lots of what Jesus was saying at this time with his disciples. And it is powerful, it is profound, it's helpful. And as we turn to this passage, Jesus is talking to a group of men who are grieving at the news of his departure. And he is encouraging them with saying, hey, you're not going to be alone. And I'm sending my spirit, the Holy Spirit, to be with you and he's going to help you. Now, you will, of course, face some hardships, you'll face hatred, but you're not going to be alone. And then as they're grieving, he tells them that there's joy that is to be anticipated, which helps them, helps us. He tells them that there's joy that is permanent, that will never be taken away. And he says, and also you can ask for Joy, that is, my wife just smiled at me here, so I'm sorry, I'm a little distracted. Um, <laughs> uh, there's joy that's ongoing, and that we can ask for that joy ongoing. And so you say, hey, you know, I'm not feeling real joyful, I'm facing lots of struggles, and many of us, if not all of us, have struggles or difficulties of some form. And we prayed for this morning that God would give us an infusion of joy. And whatever that looks like for you, and we're going to have a time of prayer at the end, I'm trusting that God would speak to you and help you with this, okay? So that's kind of where we're going in our passage. So again, we are in John chapter 16, and we're going to pick it up in uh, verse 16, and we're just going to go to verse 24. And so the first thing that we see in our passage this morning is and to harness the power of anticipated joy. So this is actionable, something we can do. Harness the power of anticipated joy, okay? So this is John chapter 16, starting with verse 16. So Jesus went on to say, again, encouraging his disciples in their grief. He said, now in a little while, you will see me no more. And then after a little while... You will see me. I'm just going to pause right there. When I was reading that uh, anew this week, uh, boy, it really struck me how Jesus described death and his upcoming resurrection. He described it in terms of, you know, you see me now, right? And then you're not going to see me. He didn't say, I will cease to exist. <laughs> he didn't say, and then it's over. He says that I will still exist, but behind a veil, so to speak. You're not going to see me, but I'm still there. Right? Like someone who goes into another room. They don't cease to exist, but we just can't see them. There's a separation. Somehow this ministered to me this week. Another affirmation that when we die, we don't cease to exist. Right? We still are alive. 
helps us when we think about those that we are, um, love and are dearly, dearly departed. They're still existing. Right? And so Jesus, in describing his death, said, Guys, I want to let you know this is help coming up. I'm going to die. And he told them very plainly. He says, you see me now, then you're not going to see me. <laughs> but after a little while, you're going to see me again. Right? This is what is to be anticipated. Okay? You know it's going to be tough for a bit, but it's not going to be forever. Then Jesus goes on in verse 17 saying this. He says, at this, now, they heard this from Jesus, some of his disciples said to one another, so <laughs> what does he mean? Like, what is he saying here? So he said, in a little while, you'll see me no more, and then after a little while, you will see me. They didn't quite put together all the pieces yet at this point. And he said, because I'm going to the Father. We read that last week. They kept asking, what does he mean by a little while? Right? We don't understand what he's saying. Verse 19. Now Jesus saw that they wanted to ask him about this. So he said to them, Are you asking one another what I mean when I, when I said, In a little while you will see me no more, and then after a little while you will see me? And then he says this, Very truly I tell you, you will weep and mourn, in contrast, while the world rejoices. You will grieve, but your grief will turn to joy. And as an illustration, he said this, Now a woman giving birth to a child has pain, because her time has come. But when her baby is born, she forgets the anguish because of her joy that a child is born into the world. So with you. Now is your time of grief. But I will see you again. And you will rejoice. We're going to pause right there. Jesus did say that there will be weeping and mourning. God does not spare us from this. Now, I wish he would, <laughs> to be quite honest. Right? There are some griefs that are um, every day, as in cold floors in the morning, or colds or traffic or lukewarm coffee, right? <laughs> some of these minor ones. And then on the other side of the um, continuum, there are griefs that are um, just all-consuming and overbearing and life-altering. Loss of a spouse, loss of a child, some type of devastating news of some sort. And there's all of these things that come in the middle of varying degrees. We'll read next week that Jesus indeed said that there's trouble in this world. And God doesn't spare us from it, but it's with us in it. Doesn't leave us, doesn't forsake us, doesn't abandon us. You and I are not alone in the midst of Things that are just confusing right? or difficult and hard to work through. But Jesus encourages us in this way in saying that there's joy that's going to be coming. Joy anticipated. Like a mom who is in labor, and labor is a thing. Well, obviously, I've never <laughs> personally um, birthed a baby, but I've been with someone who has. And it is, it's a thing. Right? It's hard, difficult. But in the morning, a moment of anguish in the birthing process, right, that 
period of time does not compare to the joy that comes after. And there is joy that comes after for you, for me. Jesus promised us that joy. Now, Paul picks up on this thought. This is in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 16. He says this to us as well. He says, hey, in the midst of our difficulty, we do not lose heart. Though our outer, outer self is wasting away, and it is wasting away, our inner self is being renewed day by day. Now check out verse 17. For this light and momentary affliction. Right? Light and momentary. Right? Here's the good news. Even if you are afflicted for your full life on earth, it's only for a lifetime. Right? There's much more to come. Right? And in comparison to eternity... <laughs> All of our afflictions, and they are difficult at times. I don't want to downplay that. There's grief. But our light and momentary afflictions, what are they doing? They're preparing us for the eternal weight of glory. Don't you like that? Beyond all comparison. If you're putting it in a scale compared to, like this term, the weight of glory. That weight is nothing far outweighs in comparison to this weight of glory. The afflictions are light in comparison. As we look not to things, this is is the thing, we look not to things that are seen. Not everything that is is seen. As we look not to the things that are seen, but the things that are unseen. For the things that are seen are transient, here for a time. But the things that are unseen, that's that's the stuff. They're eternal. So don't Lose heart. Look to what is to come. Harness that. And that's a, that's a very specific word I chose. Harness the power of anticipated joy. It'll help you get through the momentary trials. Jesus himself did this. I love this verse in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2. The writer of Hebrews encourages us to look at Jesus. It says, now looking to Jesus, who is the founder and the perfecter of our faith, the author and the finisher of our faith. Now check this out. Who... For the joy, for the joy, for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. You know what helped Christ get through the agony and the shame of the cross? The joy that was set before. He focused in on what all that he was going through was going to produce, and he knew that there was a far greater joy ahead of him. Instead of just focusing in on the anguish of the moment, and that's often all that we can see, I would encourage you, like Christ, God, help me to see beyond this. Because there is joy, 
for you. And often we can't see it because it's so painful and so overwhelming. In that we say, God, help me to look at Jesus as Jesus looked forward to the joy and harnessed that joy that helped him get through the pain that he endured. God, help me to do the same. That's powerful. And it's for you as well. There is joy beyond today. My wife and I, this last year, we took on a audacious goal. We're going to read this thick book together. This is Daily Devotions, and um, it's called The One-Year Book of Christian History. And what it does is 365 stories of people throughout history, and some we were familiar with, some, I had no idea these people even lived. And as we have been reading these throughout this year, and we're almost done, it has occurred to me time and time and time and time again how much people in history have suffered for the cause of Christ or suffered just because life is tough and how they have persevered and overcame and endured and glorified God. And so many of these stories, the people in them are focusing not on the temporary pain, but focusing in on the joy that was yet to come. And that gave them the power to endure. It will give you power to endure as well. Harness that and ask for God to help because sometimes we can't see it, right? God, will you show me what is happening in my heart through this? God, will you show me what you're doing? God, will you help me to understand what's on the other side and help me to focus on that to get me through today? And it can become from as easy as, and we know this, <laughs> Focusing in on the result of something difficult, be it a diet or being at lifting weights or getting through a hard week looking forward to a paycheck or doing your homework really, really, really well so that you can get a good grade, that you can help people. Or at the very, very end, the reward that God promises to us to get through things. God helps us. And I want you to focus on what is being birthed out of your pain. We often ask, God, deliver me from this. And that's not a bad prayer. But God is wiser you, than you. Do you know that? Right? He is loving. He will not abandon you. He does have a plan, even in the midst of things like we wonder why. Will you trust him? Will you ask him to see the greater joy and understand by faith that there is joy that is yet to come? It will help you. Your focus matters. And if you have a hard time seeing the end, trust in the promise of Jesus. Right? And he promised that there will be a joy which is permanent. And this is our next point. Trust the promise of permanent joy. First, we harness the power of joy anticipated, and then we trust that there's going to be joy, and it will be permanent. Jesus continues in verse 22 of John 16. He says, then so with you. Now is your time of grief. And for them it was, of course, this departing. And they will have grief going forward. For us, we endure times of grief as well. Jesus promises, but I will see you again and you will rejoice. And no one will take away your joy. That's good news. That's good news. This is joy that is 
permanent. This is joy that no one can take away. This is permanent, lasting, eternal joy. Right? And this matters. This is stored up for those who believe, promised right? by Christ Himself. This thought inspired by the Holy Spirit in Peter, who was, by the way, going to deny Christ in just a little bit after this passage. He was reinstated and he served Christ and he was serving a church that was going through difficulty and he wrote to them. That's why we have the letters of First and Second Peter in that context. And remembering this, this is what Peter said in verse um, 3 of chapter 1 of First Peter. He said, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Focusing first on God, thanking the Father for Christ. He says, now according to his great mercy, he has caused us to be born again into a living hope. Do you like that? <laughs> Where does this hope come from? Well, it comes through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to an inheritance right? that is imperishable, that is undefiled, that is unfading. It's kept in heaven for you. No rust can, cor can uh, corrode it. No thief can come and steal it. Right? No inflation rate will diminish it, right? Guaranteed. For you, right? Who by God's power are being guarded through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed at the last time. In this you rejoice. Now, if you can't think of anything to rejoice about in your life, okay, and sometimes we have to look harder than others, but there are things there, I guarantee you this. I want you to think about the inheritance of what is yet to come that is permanent, that's guaranteed, and let that give you something to rejoice about even now in our current circumstances, right? In this you rejoice, though now for a little while there's this language again. If necessary, you have been grieved by various trials, right? So that the testing, the, the tested genuineness of your faith, right? more precious than gold that perishes though it is tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Though you have not seen Him, none of us in this room have seen Him physically. You love Him. Though you do not see Him now, you believe in Him. This is us. And rejoice with joy that is inexpressible, filled with glory because you are trusting God's promise, obtaining the outcome of your faith, the, salvations of, the salvation of your souls. This is good news, friend. Peter tapped into this. He didn't promise the church, hey, you know, everything's going to change, and you're going to be okay, and no one's going to hurt you. He didn't say that. He says, you know what? It's going to be tough. Right? There are going to be trials. People are going to betray you. Things aren't going to turn out well. You're going to make mistakes. There's going to be some grief, right? There's going to be some resistance or hatred or misunderstandings or persecutions or difficulty. But hey, you're going to get through this. And what is on the other side of this veil is glorious, incomprehensible. So our faith maintains joy, and yet is what to come that's going to be promised and going to be permanent. Right? This is incredible. This is the living hope. 
And John, the apostle who wrote, recorded these words, he wrote First and Second, Third John, also wrote the book of Revelation, where God gave John as he was abandoned, that he was um, persecuted, he was all alone, gave him a glimpse of what is yet to come, and it is glorious. It's called Revelation. And in the end of that, he gives us a glimpse, right? Let this fill your mind. John said, then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. This is Revelation 21. From the first heaven and the first earth had passed away and the sea was no more. And I saw a holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride, adorned for her husband. And then I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, behold, the dwelling place of God is with man. He will dwell with them, and they will be His people, and God Himself will be with them as their God. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Death shall be no more. Neither shall there be mourning, nor crying, nor pain anymore. For the former things, they have passed away. And he who was seated on the throne said, Behold, I am making all things new. And he said, Write this down, John, for these words are trustworthy. And they are true. That's good news. Joy, that is, permanent. It's anticipated. Surely it is now. And we know that by the promise of God, it is permanent. Fix that in your mind. It will help you persevere. Be encouraged, friends. Be encouraged. This is what Jesus spoke to his disciples, what he speaks to us. It's helpful. So, we are to harness anticipated joy. Okay. You think about that. We are tr to trust joy that is permanent. And this is the third thing that Jesus brings forward in this passage for us to do. Ask for the provision of ongoing joy. Not just joy that is upcoming and permanent, but joy that gets us through. John 16, 23 and 24. <clears throat> he says, now in that day... You will no longer ask me for anything. It's on the other side. Very truly I tell you, my Father will give you whatever you ask in my name. Until now, you have not asked for anything in my name. Ask, and you will receive. And your joy will be complete or made full, depending upon your version in that day, by the way, is the time between the ascension and the return of Christ. We're living in that day. Right? This is the time we're living in. Right? And so this passage is um, um, a conditional promise, right? There is an ask, right? So our responsibility is to ask, right? And he says whatever, and this is in the context of joy or having complete joy. Your joy will be complete. That is, it'll, it's a process. It'll be full, which tells me that in this life we have things that take joy away, right? Like a fuel tank that has a leak in it, right? Sometimes, man, we got holes all over, right? We're leaking joy fast, right? Jesus knew this. He anticipated this. He lived this. Right? But he says, listen, ask 
me. For whatever you need that will help you retain and fill up your joy tank, so to speak. This is like an airplane. Right? This is incredible that this can even be done, right? That goes up in the air with a limited fuel capacity, knowing that it will not have the fuel to get to the final destination. And they have these things in air tankers. You guys know about these things? Like, as a plane is flying at hundreds of miles an hour, another plane comes up and fuels it as they go along. This blows my mind. I can't even get a car into a parking place sometimes, right? (laughs) How are they doing this? What do they do it? A refill to make it through to the end destination of the journey. God will refill your tank to give you the fuel of joy, if I'm going to use that analogy, to continue your journey until you are safely home. This is what he's referring to. And so I I want you to do this very thing as you are, harnessing the power and anticipated joy, thinking about what is being birthed from this, thinking about the joy that's permanent, looking towards the reward, whatever that may be, will help you get through whatever you're going through. Do that, trust, and then ask God, God, will you give me joy right now? Will you help me right now? now to get through this thing. And it's not too good to be true. I'm telling you, often when we are in the depths of depression and despair and despondency and discouragement, these things happen where everything seems to be closed in. I want you to, I'm not even telling you, just pull up yourself up. I'm not telling you that. Ask God to give you help. Ask God to help you even to believe that joy is possible. Are you hearing me? Because sometimes you don't believe it. Ask in my name, and that's what we pray in Jesus' name. Disciples at that time just asked Jesus, and Jesus sent this Holy Spirit He's with the Father. He says, hey, I'm there. I made a way for you to communicate to the Father. Ask in my name, in me. That's why we pray that way. But ask for what you need so that your joy may be complete. And sometimes, you know what? We, sometimes we don't know what we need. That's okay. God, give me what you need. I trust you, what I need, because I trust you. Help me. Sometimes we just need an infusion of hope. Sometimes we need some wisdom and understanding. Sometimes we just need a, a hug from somebody or a listening ear. Sometimes we just need a sleep. Peace. Ask God, God, will you help me in this? Again, not downplaying the difficulty, but trying to encourage you with the promise that Christ, He said this to us. Ask, ask. He says that. You'll receive. Your joy will be refueled, right? Full, right? It's going to be drained again. (laughs) Ask again. So this is the prayer for today. 
Even when I'm speaking, there's lots of tears in here. So we're going to pray specifically. And so uh, I I thought about just having people come forward, but I think I'm going to do this. If you say, hey, I need an infusion of joy today, okay, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to have you stand up right where you are, and I'm going to pray for you. I'm going to ask those around you to pray for you. And if you need more prayer or specific prayer, hey, let's pray afterwards, perhaps during the last song. But if you say, hey, Pastor, I'm in need of of prayer today, you're not asking me, you're just asking the Lord, hey, I'm responding and say, I need an infusion of joy today. I want you to stand up right now. Go ahead and just stand up. Yeah. Stand up. This is an act of faith, by the way. You're standing up saying, it's, it's, it's an act of faith, saying, God, I need this. Right? And so now I'm going to ask you as a congregation, if you're by somebody, just reach out. If they're comfortable with it, you know, put your hand on their shoulder. Yeah, just do that. Just do that. Just do that right now. And I'm going to pray as you pray. And I'm going to ask God to do miracles here. And I've been asking God, will you do miracles today? And I don't know what you need Um, I don't know what you're going through. I know some of the stories. I don't know all of them. And we're going to ask God to do something supernatural today. Okay. So Jesus, um, we love you. You are glorious. You are our blessed Redeemer. You're the Son of God. You're here today in our midst, Lord. And these, your precious people, your sons, your daughter, and they're standing up like you've told us to ask. And in this faith, Father, I ask now that you (laughs) would infuse and refuel joy in people's hearts today supernatural from you and we're asking in Jesus name that you God would supply today that you would meet the needs in a way that you deem best that is the whatever God we trust you for that and will you do that even now perspective or healing or hope or clarity or patience God or just rest God I don't know Lord you know do your work here We're asking as a body, based upon your promises, together in community. God, do that. Do that miracle so that those who are standing this day, perhaps this moment, surely in this week, that their level of joy would raise because of your refueling. Help us all to hang on to the promise of the permanent joy. God, help us all to harness the provision, God, of anticipated joy. Lord, and thank you that you're filling tanks today. Wash over us, we ask. Fill us, we ask. Comfort us, we ask. Show us, Lord. Increase our faith, we ask. Be with my brothers and sisters in a powerful, and a practical, and a personal way this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Okay. Yeah. Hugs are good, and keep those up, and keep praying. If you want more time of prayer, hey, um, let's pray up here. We'll spend some time doing that. You're going to lead us in song. We're going to have a concluding song. And if you want to come up during the song, you surely can do that. Um, If you want to pray afterwards, you surely can do that. There'll be people here. I'll be here. And then we can conclude in, in this way. So, okay.